for you the first topic, let's say, with the with your welcome words. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So good morning again, everyone. Uh, great to see colleagues from cities, but also from uh, national programs dealing with uh, the, 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 the theme, the issue of climate neutral neighborhoods and, 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 and uh, urban uh, districts. Uh, I'm Hans-Günter Schwarz from the Austrian Ministry of uh, Climate Action, and I'm the chair of the PET program, the program, uh, the transnational program, which has the goal to bring about 100 positive, positive energy districts in European countries by 2025. Uh, as you might know, uh, we are putting an emphasis on working with uh, the, the, the stakeholders that we call the problem owners. And in our view, these are people, these are institutions which invest in the cities, which can therefore also uh, more or less uh, define uh, an agenda uh, towards climate neutrality. And in, uh, according to what we've seen, this is uh, city administrations, because they invest in infrastructure, in urban infrastructures. This is uh, utilities of different sorts in mobility, in energy, also in, in circular economy. Uh, because those utilities, they have to administrate our lives in, in a certain way and also invest in, in their services. And last but not least, it's the real estate sector because uh, really, real estate companies, they invest heavily in uh, creating the built environment. Now, uh, a week or, yeah, I think it's a week ago, we had a, a, a webinar or a presentation by uh, Lyon Confluence, where our colleagues from Lyon uh, explained to us how they work with the real estate sector and how they uh, make sure in uh, the way that uh, the built environment is created that there is sustainably, uh, a sustainable development towards climate neutrality. Now, uh, we hope to, to hear uh, more about the efforts in Malmö where work is going on uh, orchestrated between the city and utilities and here Again, we try to find out what uh, we have to do so that utilities can uh, fulfill their promise to the citizens, be of course successful in, in, in their business models and uh, follow uh, the need to, to, to uh, reach climate neutrality. So we hope very much uh, that, we ha I hope very much that we have a fruitful discussion today and I hand it back to you, Robert, uh, for the for the facilitation. Okay, <clears throat> thanks a lot, Hans Günther, for this uh, welcome words. My name is Robert Hunterberger. I'm a member of the program management team of uh, the PET program. And uh, just you can see the agenda. I will show you just two slides for a short introduction to this webinar series. Then I will uh, hand over to the colleagues from Malmö, to Jonas and Peter who will both explain us more about their case, about how they successfully cooperate in Malmö uh, between city administration and utility. So we have at least, let's say, approximately one hour time for this presentation and also for the Q&A. And then we have one hour left for discussion to comparing these cases or this case of cooperation in Malmö with other cases in other cities and countries uh, through Europe. Okay, one second, I try to, yes, uh, uh, Hans Günther already mentioned most of these topics uh, regarding the, our motivation for this webinar series. Uh, uh, we have been starting the first webinar series last week regarding cooperation between city administration and the real estate sector. Today is the start of the webinar series regarding city administration with utilities and we would like to take into account in different webinars uh, uh, the different situations uh, uh, how how uh, also 
what type of utilities you have within in our cities. So we have different ownership structures. So of course, it's very different how to cooperate if the if the utility is owned by the municipality or it's privately owned. It really depends about the technical potential in our cities. It depends also about the different subsectors. If you're speaking about electricity or heating, it depends if we have the possibility to have a heating network, a existing heating network or new heating networks. And of course, also it's depending if we have uh, decentralized solutions, we have different city strategies and of course, um, uh, it's also a big difference if you have new development areas like it's, for example, in Malmavili, or you, if you have existing neighborhoods. And uh, so, throughout Europe and throughout our cities, we found two different types of, uh, of roles of the city in this cooperation. Either the city is a co-owner of the utility itself, um, it sounds, on the first hand, it sounds easy or promising, but it, for developing uh, pets, but in fact, it isn't as easy because there are a lot of limitations regarding uh, uh, regulations, European regulation in general. So it, that means the unbundling of networks and production and sales within the electricity, electricity sector. And of course, there's also a lot of limitations because of the own economic interests within the city. So usually the city administration needs the dividends or subsidize other parts, for example, public transport. So it's not always easy, even within the city, to, um, to, uh, to, um, to promote uh, new innovative solutions. And the second role of the city could be as a stakeholder and regulator. So that means to, uh, to regulate or to motivate private actors to go towards more innovative solutions. And depending on the country, there are different legal possibilities for that. But overall, in each of these cases, the, the overall overarching uh, objective is to find alignment, alignment between public interest, uh, for example, the interest of to minimize CO2 emissions, uh, the, the objective of sustainability, to reaching this more sustainability in our districts and the economic interest short or long-term of the operator of the city. Uh, and today we will uh, uh, hear from a very interesting case of Malmö Hilly, and the case where the, uh, the city administration uh, of Malmö is working with a private actor, uh, with, uh, which is E.ON, which is the big, I think one of the biggest, for sure, it's one of the biggest utility in Europe and one of the biggest utilities in Germany. And so I will hand over to Jonas for your presentation. Thank you very much. And let me share my screen then. <clears throat> I think you need to stop sharing before I can okay. start sharing it. No, okay, I stop, stop it already. We can still see your slides, Robert. Okay. Now it stops. Good. Here we go. Let's okay. try. <clears throat> out anyway. So we usually just have to pick out. <laughs> <laughs> <Here we go. clears throat> All right. So hopefully you can see my screen now. Yes, we see. All right, excellent. So let me just shift this away. There we go. <clears throat> so my name is Jonas Kamble. I work for the city of Malmö and my uh, role is to lead the climate transition Malmö that I will speak about. And, and of course, uh, Peter will then more go into specific examples of uh, how we're working on, on some key topics. And so 
climate transition Malmö came into play because we recognized that the city of Malmö has adopted the global goals. We were one of the first cities in the world to do so. And we recognized the fact that uh, we need to join forces to meet complex societal challenges moving forward. And we also know that cities are on the front line of climate change and estimates from the UN points that somewhere between 50 to 70 percent of the climate impact uh, will originate uh, in the cities either directly or through the consumption in cities. And while we recognize all these things, it's also important that when we make this massive transition in just a very short amount of time, it's important that we leave no one behind. And towards that background, uh, the politicians in Malmö has said that, that we need to be aligned with the one and a half degree goal. So that is our overarching goal. And our new environmental program that I'll get a little bit into uh, will speak specifically about that ambition level and what that means until 2030. Our mission then is to uh, concert the efforts to solve the challenges that we're facing, both from an ecologic, economic and social point of view. It is to identify key ways to help reduce carbon emissions in synergy with other global goals. So we're not allowed to focus on only achieving one goal, but we need to have a multiple and, and a broad impact. And our, another mission that we have from our politicians is to mobilize city agencies, businesses, academia so, and society to take climate actions. And climate transition Malmö is basically how do we go from words to action? This is what it's all about. And I think it's important to recognize the fact that this is something that we've worked uh, in Malmö for at least 20 years looking back. Uh, it started with the eco city Augustenborg, which is a district in the city where we work with sustainable water modeling. Uh, and then we worked in, in Western Harbor, which a lot of people have heard and visited, where focus was primarily on the built environment and, uh, and also the energy systems. And this is something that we've done for a long time. And I think we've learned a lot over the last 20 years. And I think I just wanted to share a few of those things that we've learned and, and what they mean for us moving forward. And some of the success factors that we've identified is the, the need for a shared vision and the mutual understanding of where are we actually going? What is the thing that we're trying to accomplish? Then the role of the city has become more and more important. Uh, and I think that that's something that we've recognized more and more that we have a role partially to set ambitious goals uh, for our citizens and the businesses that we work together with, but also to step into that role of coordinating and building partnerships, creating platforms for dialogue, arenas where you can meet and talk and, and find solutions to complex problems. And also to make sure that we have a perspective where we focus on the system innovation level, that it is the systems that we're trying to change and not incremental technical break breakthroughs that we're looking at. And we made this kind of a, a spreadsheet or a dashboard just to show that we have a strong history of working on this. And, and some of these areas Peter, Peter will talk about, like for example, the climate contract Hylia, he will dig into. I'll speak a little bit about industrial symbiosis a little bit down the road. And I think this is important to recognize that we have a strong track record. Uh, that means that we've learned a lot of things, but we still have a lot of things left to learn. And, and that's why it's, it's important to recognize the fact that this is an ongoing work and that we will continue to develop as we move forward. So as I said before, climate transition mum is a way of working together. And it always starts with that, that mutual understanding of how can we create a mutual understanding of the mission and what we should prioritize? How do we then organize our efforts to get the largest possible impact? So we start with understanding the goals and the needs that we're trying to meet. What's important for those that we are there for? In our case, it's the citizens, it's the businesses, etc. Then we create that mutual understanding of the current status. So where are we right now? Uh, what can we see and what lies behind what we can see? <clears throat> what are the things that needs to change for us to move from, from the state that we are in to the state that we would like to be? And we've identified a number of success factors. Uh, one is that creation of the citywide portfolio of different initiatives so that we can understand how different things link together and how far will that portfolio actually take us and what's the gap that will be remaining. How do we organize these kind of efforts? Uh, because we, will, we are building multiple teams across the organization. And in reality, in Malmö, it will be about both that vertical and horizontal integration. The vertical being both within the different city departments 
but also across to utilities like Aon, uh, to the construction sector, to property owners, uh, to civil society, et cetera, et cetera. But also that vertical integration where you get the regional aspect, the national aspect, the pan-European aspect. And we need to be able to move and, and work on both levels. And then of course, how do we finance this? How do we make this transition happen in the real world? And we recognize also the fact that if you want to accomplish this change, you need to work on multiple levers. And I think if you want to be a little bit rough about things, you could say that maybe the last 10 to 15 years, a lot of the focus has been on technology, that technology will, will solve a lot of the problems. And then increasingly over maybe the last five years, behavior and citizen engagement have, have started to come up more and more in the dialogue. We recognize the fact that if we want to accomplish this change, we're going to have to work on multiple different things. For example, we're going to have to work on AI and digitalization. What opportunities does that allow for us to reach the goals? How do we work with governance and management issues? How can we work with instruments and regulation, laws, et cetera, et cetera? Because we recognize, for example, when it comes to mobility, that there will be a lot of national and pan-European uh, legislation that will actually pan the way for this to happen. How can we work with education, learning, and skill development, and et cetera? And so these are some of the levers uh, and some of the uh, success areas that we recognize that we have to work with in order for this to happen. And we do this in a in a step by step process. It looks like it's a step by step that just happens uh, once, but it is actually an, a very agile process and it's an iterative process. That means that uh, as you move forward, you will also go back because you might have to revisit previous steps as you get further down the road and you learn more and more. And so it starts with this step of defining what our mission is, where we're going, what's important for those that we serve. We explore then where are we today? What does that look like? What's behind what we can see? We start to solve where we generate ideas and screen solutions. We analyze those options that we have. We formulate them more clearly. Uh, we look at what is the cost benefit ratio, for example, what kind of impact will this have? And we start to prioritize. We move then into the development phase where we test prototypes virtually or in the real world like we did in Hylia. We formulate, formulate use cases where we can test and see how does this actually pan out. We then start to prepare for large scale launching where we develop implementation strategies. We then move over to the launch phase where this is the large scale implementation and testing of different solutions that we believe in and that we've prototyped and tested before. We evaluate where we learn, uh, we establish best practices, and then we start to scale. And so this is kind of what the process looks like in Malmö. And it's not only about scaling in Malmö, but I think it's also about how do we scale to other municipalities in Sweden, but also in a pan-European perspective. And I think Aeon then has an important role to play as, as was pointed out before, because I think that the, for example, the smart energy solutions that has been developed in Hylje can then move to and have moved to other municipalities in Sweden and also should be spread, of course, to other uh, areas and cities uh, across Europe, because that's how we have to work if we're going to solve what we need to solve until 2030. So our focus areas uh, are the strategic analysis of where we actually shape and form our, our understanding, that mutual understanding. And, and a lot of the focus then is also on that coordination and dialogue, bringing people together to talk about, okay, so what do we see? So this is not only a city run uh, perspective in the sense of that we set the goals, but it's about aligning goals between different organizations. And it's aligning those different kind of perspectives and or takes on what are the challenges, what are the things that we're trying to solve. Then we together we identify prioritized actions, we look at the financial solutions, and then we test. We create these strategic experiments across the city, test beds where we can test and learn, and then we can start to scale and, and move forward. And some of the key questions, I, I took this in because I think this is an important issue to, to bring. So we have the reduced emission as one of the urban developments and climate goals that we have, but there's also a number of other goals that the city have. And one of the key things that we have to ask ourselves is how do we maximize the benefit of public investments or private investments? And for example, if you look at retrofit as an example, it can contribute to almost all the budget targets that we have. It can contribute to integration, integration issues, to homelessness, segregation, regional growth aspects, reduced emissions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the question that we ask ourselves, how can we achieve synergetic eff uh, effects between different goal areas, between different actions? And to make this a little bit more complex, we have multiple goals that we need to adhere to. So we have the, the, uh, the political goals that I talked about here, 
We also have goals to come uh, looking at housing, culture, and infrastructure, and a number of other goal areas. And then we have this one, and sadly, I didn't have time to to translate this, I'll walk you through it. But these are the climate goals that are proposed now and have moved uh, onwards to political decisions right now. So until 2030, the goal is to have a 70% reduction in territorial emissions, and that's not including carbon sinks. If we include carbon sinks, we can actually get to zero uh, net emissions in Malmö. We have goals looking at sustainable consumption. Uh, and the goal then is to be that Malmö's consumption patterns should be aligned with the one and a half degree goal. We have goals specifically looking at resource effectiveness and sustainable mobility. Uh, we have goals where the Malmö city organization should be net zero by 2030, and that Malmö's energy supply should be 100% renewable uh, or recycled by 2030. And so we have a very ambitious agenda that we're going to need to deliver on. And I think this is very important to recognize that as you move into that, this is all this is about a societal change. It's not about only climate. It's not only about energy, but this is about how do we shift major systems to to benefit a lot of different actors at the same time. And so one of the examples that I wanted to raise just before I hand over to Peter is that uh, if we look at the territorial emission uh, breakdown, 90% uh, of the emissions come from four different sectors. It is large scale energy production and mobility. Each of those represent 40% of the territorial emissions. So that's a combined 80% of our footprint. And then if you add industry and work machines, then you get to 92% of the total footprint that we have if, from a territorial point of view. And so that is our priority list. And, and then we need to find ways. How can we work with both mobility? How can we work with energy production? How can we work with industry turnaround and work machines at the same time? And I think the <clears throat> urban symbiosis uh, and industry symbiosis work that we've done, where Aon has been a, a core partner, is one of those examples. And on the left, you can see this kind of a traditional way of working. You have waste prevention, recycling, collection done by certain actors. Uh, this is the city actors. Uh, you have recycling and reuse, repurposing and detoxification run by a uh, by a utility owned by the city. And then you have the energy solutions, renewable and uh, recycled energy production, where Aon, for example, is one of the key players in Malmö. And we have shifted now from talking about this in their separate silos to having an integrated perspective where we look at how can we optimize the system based on resource effectiveness instead. And so instead of this being uh, siloed, we look at this as a holistic kind of a point of view. All right, so how can we work with heating? How can we work with electricity production, storage, utilization? How can we uh, use uh, energy production in, in new ways? How could we implement PEDs, for example, or PEDs? And, and I can uh, happily tell you that we will actually have a positive energy district uh, being launched in Malmö. Uh, and I know that decision was just made right before Christmas. How can we look at waste as a resource? How do we work with water management, etc.? And I think this is very much the future uh, of how we need to work together. We need to take a holistic system oriented perspective and look at how can we accomplish multiple goals at the same time and multiple benefits for the citizens, for the businesses, for the utilities and for the city and society as a whole. And with that, I will hand over to Peter and let him continue. Yes, thanks a lot, Jonas. So maybe Peter, you could continue immediately and then uh, to have the Q&A and a and discussion together. So, <clears throat> sorry. Thank you so much, uh, Jonas. And uh, uh, let me see if uh, you can see my screen now. Uh, do you see the PowerPoint presentation? Yes, we see. So maybe perfect. you could switch to presentation mode, mode yes. <clears throat> okay, perfect. Yeah, I think you put, set, the, set the stage very, very nicely, Jonas. And uh, I think uh, just some starting words. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Berne. Uh, I work in uh, Eon Energy Solutions, uh, our city energy solutions uh, uh, leg in that business. And uh, my focus is uh, towards sustainable city development. And uh, I worked in different roles linking to that. I was uh, deeply involved uh, when we uh, signed the climate contract for Hylia and also uh, uh, the coming uh, efforts after that with the project. 
Uh, I also worked a bit in, in, in our European uh, market and also setting up uh, the collaboration between the regions in Sweden, bridging different know-how and uh, capabilities between the regions. And uh, I think that is, uh, of course, one a key enabler to, to better utilize the different uh, know-how that we have uh, across Europe. And uh, uh, also uh, uh, there's a great potential there, even though the local prerequisites and, and the regional prerequisites, prerequisites vary quite much. But uh, in this uh, presentation, I, I will also take a step back and, and reflect a little bit about uh, the learnings uh, that we've done through the processes in, and the corporations we have had in the city of Malmö in uh, different levels. And um, of course, um, we already, I think uh, Jonas summarized this picture very nicely, but what we conclude is uh, that uh, a lot of the uh, transition uh, momentum is in the cities today. And of course, uh, that's uh, one part of that is that we see a lot of the challenges and the needs in the cities, but the cities are the one uh, I reckon that really take the proactive uh, approach here uh, in order to drive transition. And uh, in order to uh, meet uh, that uh, uh, driver from the cities, uh, Eon in the Nordic has uh, a clear commitment also. We wanna position ourselves there. We wanna be relevant into the future. And then we really need to uh, make effort to make sure that our business is sustainable. And uh, one uh, target linking to that is that our, all the energy that we supply until 2025 should be based on renewable or recycled energy. And that is of course, uh, in a way to enable uh, the different municipalities that we are working with in re reaching their goals. And we knew, need to do that in, in uh, deep cooperation and also try to think uh, about the, our business in new ways and, and drive cooperation in a co-innovation uh, uh, process. I, I actually took this picture also from, uh, it's an old picture from the city of Malmö, but I think this also uh, gives a quite nice overview how the city of Malmö thinks about innovation. I think it's very important to uh, create nodes and uh, summon resources to drive uh, innovation. And the city of Malmö uh, had a very clear uh, strategy linking to utilizing the city as a test bed. Testbed for different topics, uh, such as uh, how can we work with uh, future energy systems and smart grids and utilize new build city districts to drive that innovation process, such as Hylje, but also linking to, uh, of course, the existing uh, built environment. And uh, that is also a clear strategy in the Hylje context to bridge the learnings done there and also the solutions and the know-how to implement that uh, in the existing building stock. Uh, Jonas also uh, mentioned the industrial symbiosis, but it's always uh, the, the uh, strategy or, or the ambition and targets to uh, really emphasize that the, the solutions uh, need to be able to be scaled also. Scale to the existing environment and scale to other city districts and also, as Jonas mentioned, in a larger perspective to other municipalities and cities. Uh, so moving forward, I, I want to uh, talk a bit about the Hylje project, which is uh, one of the flagship projects where we uh, driven a number of different projects uh, jointly. Uh, it's a new built city district. Uh, the municipality of Malmö is uh, uh, very dense and this is like the, the uh, perhaps correct me if I'm wrong Jonas, but the last really greenfield area of the city of Malmö. It's a lot about densification uh, otherwise. And uh, this is a picture of Hylje 2004 uh, and this is how it looks now. So it's been uh, really 
um, uh, intense uh, development of the city district. And also, uh, which I believe is very interesting, uh, that the city of Malmö in involves a lot of different stakeholders, uh, not at least on the building side. So there's a number of different developers engaged in the city development process. And the city of Malmö, uh, coming back to Jonas' presentation, I believe have a very clear role in orchestrating these processes and creating uh, a joint ag agenda for uh, many of these different uh, stakeholders that are involved in the process. And as a starting point, um, I think this was in, in uh, end 2010, um, we started a dialogue. We have uh, had, of course, a dialogue going also, but uh, really targeting how could we utilize Hylje as a test bed to show the way uh, in the energy transition for the rest of the city of Malmö. We had a, a nice flagship project in the Western Harbor, uh, which Jonas mentioned, but what is the challenges that we see ahead now? And uh, how could we develop and try the solution, not only from a technical perspective, but also linking into the business model, the incentive, the organizational perspectives into the Hylje city development process and learn from that in order to really see how can we meet and enable uh, the very ambitious targets formulated to 2030 for the city. So uh, jointly, we formulated a climate contract outlining a joint vision that the city, that the, uh, city district Hylje should be a global role model for uh, sustainable city development with a number of very ambitious targets. And uh, I think this was very important to, to uh, set the stage and in line the work. Uh, it was an ambitious contract, so it's not a legal binding contract. It's rather show how we can cooperate moving forward. And linking to this, we also worked on a, on a much more detailed level uh, roadmap outlining different targets in order to achieve those overarching targets defined in the climate contract and also outlining uh, how do we measure that we are successful and how do we divide responsibilities between the different roles that we have. So uh, the climate contract was between the city of Malmö, uh, Eon and uh, the utility uh, via Sud managing the wastewater and waste management in the city. Uh, the target was formulated until uh, uh, 2020, uh, so we really want to see how we could achieve the 2030 targets already 2020 in the city of Hylje. And that was very much linking to uh, enable an energy or a city district supplied uh, with renewable energy and where we really utilize local prerequisites also between uh, segments and the built environment. And we are now uh, supplying uh, renewable and recycled uh, district heating fully in the city district of Hylje. Uh, we are uh, quite far ahead on the power balance uh, and uh, also uh, looking uh, on a number of different innovation that now being scaled uh, beyond Hylje. So coming back a little bit and, and, and uh, uh, if there are any urgent questions you want to want to ask, uh, don't don't hesitate to interrupt because there's a lot of things to be said here, of course. But uh, I think also looking on the on the cooperation perspective, uh, the climate contract really uh, set the basis or the fundament for cooperation. But it was also linking to how could we cooperate and engage the, not at least the developers, which has an uh, of course crucial role in order to enable a uh, more integrated uh, energy solution. This was uh, done and tested also in different ways uh, in early 2012 uh, through the um, sustainability agreement Hylje, where the developers themselves jointly uh, and uh, facilitated by the city of Malmö defined the targets for their projects um, jointly between the many different developers involved. Uh, later, uh, that was uh, transferred or um, uh, developed into what is called the environmental program Hylje, which is very much uh, uh, a process that uh, the city of Malmö uh, is managing together with the developers to define an, a high ambition level and also uh, show what the opportunities 
for the city district Hulia uh, provides, but also bringing in a state of art into that process and, and really uh, show, show that for the developer, what is available today and what can we do together and what is your ambition in that and signing that off. And that creates a, a driver, I would say, from the developers to, to be ambitious and see the opportunities rather than uh, putting harsh criteria into the development process. One other example is uh, how the city of Malmö work with the, the, with the uh, detail planning. Uh, we have an ongoing uh, development, which is called the solar quarter, where everything will be focused on optimizing the, the solar potential and the local generation for this part of the city district of Hylia. So that was uh, some example, but it's all about cooperation and finding the, the models uh, and methods in order to, to drive this cooperation and, and line targets between different stakeholders. Uh, <clears throat> Very shortly, I already touched on this, but uh, we defined, which I think was very valuable also, uh, linking to the climate contract. How do we actually define the solution that we are uh, targeting? And uh, what is the governing principle between, for example, having a supply of 100% renewable energy or utilizing the local prerequisites as much as possible? What, what does it really mean to create resource efficient and integrated solutions? And uh, I think just uh, gathering and, and defining uh, the principles around that was very valuable. So we actually know that we talk the same language, that we mean the same thing. And uh, that is also an important uh, fundament in, in uh, uh, defining the acti activities that we jointly wanna uh, move forward with. Uh, we said that uh, Hylje was uh, one important one role was as a test bed and, and this was already in, in 2011 and, and a lot of different projects has been carried out in the framework of Hylje, linking to smart homes, smart building, distributed generation and all these topics that still is very relevant. And uh, a number of the pilots have not been uh, fully um, uh, commercialized, but a lot of the learnings have led to further development. One uh, very important uh, learning is the need of digitalization in order to create uh, uh, means for communication and sharing information between different nodes in the city and, and the different infrastructure that the, the city supplies the city and really create this integrated interface between the infrastructure and the buildings. So everything could be harmonized and working together. And uh, this drives a lot of uh, complexity, but we see this as still the crucial point in order to create a more robust, decentralized and flexible energy system, which is uh, the key enabler for the energy tr transition as we see it. Uh, this was, uh, of course, also um, enabled by cooperation, both on EU level and national level, providing uh, both funding, but not the least framework for cooperation and bringing in the right expertise to the projects. Uh, <clears throat> So coming back to digitalization, uh, so taking one example of, of the, the learnings that really been scaled now is uh, how uh, we developed uh, cloud and IoT based uh, solutions that could uh, communicate between the different nodes of the energy system. And through that enable for prosumers to have a more active role in the energy system, also providing uh, ancillary services and, and energy system services, uh, both through, through local generation, but not at least through the flexibility provided. So um, one, uh, one uh, solution that we really um, uh, are scaling now is uh, based on these ecto cloud. There's a lot of different features, features on that. But uh, looking on the build environment, uh, there's a, a huge uh, flexibility provided by the thermal inertia uh, in the aggregated building stock, which, which 
provides great opportunities to uh, uh, optimize on energy system level, not at least on the thermal side, district heating and district cooling, where we could communicate with the buildings and uh, proactively uh, charge or discharge the buildings with heat and cool and through that uh, manage peaks in the uh, demand side and uh, on the uh, distribution and the production side. Harmonizing this, allowing us to uh, not uh, uh, have to ramp up uh, reserve capacity, for example, and through that being much more resource efficient and allow us to utilize the renewable energy uh, to a higher uh, extent. All, and also, I think it's important, and, and Jonas uh, mentioned that also, to understand uh, what value uh, do our different measures bring into the process. And, and I think it's very uh, nice that really uh, uh, adopting the SDGs in that process. And uh, this is just a summary, but we want to understand what we are doing also, what benefits that has um, uh, looking at the SDGs. So that is also something that we're working on. And I think that is also important in order to be able to be transparent and, and also um, potentially also show where there are gaps uh, in our focus, which need to be complemented by other initiatives. So this was much, quite much Hylia. We have a very, very interesting project also, uh, which uh, we call Deep Geo. And I don't know uh, time-wise, but uh, if we have five minutes more, I could jump into that briefly also, because that is a, a next uh, project we are also working together on. Yes, maybe three or four minutes, just short, because we really would like to focus on all these questions regarding contract and cooperation. But uh, if it's, uh, yeah. Three, four minutes, I think it's I do it very, very quickly. So uh, what we are looking at now in Hylia is uh, what we call uh, deep uh, GEO. It's uh, through a solution called Enhanced Geothermal System. And uh, we are working on a test hole in the city of Malmö now. Uh, we do that in, in a broad cooperation uh, with the city of Malmö, but also with uh, other experts, uh, geothermal experts and geologic, geological experts. Um, and uh, the idea is really to develop a solution to map the bedrock and understand uh, the uh, prerequisites in order to develop a deep geothermal solution for heat generation in the city of Malmö. And uh, when I say deep, we aim at uh, six to six, seven kilometers down in the hard bedrock, hard dry bedrock of Malmö. And uh, this is a, is a quite new technology. And uh, one um, key uh, um, threshold or, or, or uh, uh, challenge with this is that uh, nobody knows how the bedrock looks and uh, prerequisites in order to develop an uh, enhanced geothermal solution before actually drilling down which is associated with high level of investments and uh, uncertainties. So in the test hole, we want to develop a methodology where we map the bedrock through um, uh, actually gathering uh, the sound uh, that the drilling creates into the bedrock with geophones. And uh, through that, do a lot of different uh, analyzes in order to understand uh, how can we drill? Where should we drill? Uh, what is the likelihood of success? And uh, the key question then is the thermal uh, gradient. How hot is it down in the bedrock? And what is the uh, potential to um, uh, get a good flow of water permeability uh, down in the bedrock? And if we are successful, um, the technology is very, very simple. You pump down water, which you then pump up, and, and uh, you have a, for one plant estimated one cubic kilometer of uh, heat exchanging surface down in the hard, dry bedrock. And uh, the benefit with this, if we succeed, uh, and the ambition is to have a first plant in Malmö 2024, uh, supplying approximately 10% of the district heating in Malmö. And uh, this is a solution that is uh, uh, 
100% renewable. It is uh, noise free. It doesn't need any massive transportation. It's 100% uh, renewable. It's not weather dependent. And uh, can we do this in a very, and develop this in a controlled and uh, safe way and lowering all the uncertainties um, uh, before actually drilling down and putting a lot of investment into it and develop this met methodology. We believe that this really could be a game changer for uh, urban energy systems uh, in Sweden and also around Europe. And if we can achieve this in Malmö, we can do it in more or less uh, everywhere in Europe. That's our, our uh, hope at least. Okay, that was very short about the DPO. Sorry for, for uh, also pushing that into the presentation. Okay, thanks a lot, Peter. Thanks a lot, Jonas, for the really interesting presentations.